He's the T-Rex of political talk. Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. Joe Berlinger is our guest for the rest of the hour. He's an award-winning filmmaker, journalist, and photographer. His films include landmark documentaries like Brothers Keeper, Paradise Lost, The Child Murders at Robin Hood Hills, and Metallica, Some Kind of Monster. His most recent film, the multi-award winning Crude, debuted at the 2009 Sundance Film Festival and is scheduled for theatrical release in September. It is September. The inside story of the controversial $27 billion Amazon Chernobyl case in Ecuador. And uh, it goes on. Stephen Holden of the New York Times says, Crude, rarely have such conflicts been examined with the depth and power uh, that Joe has uh, in engaged in. Uh, so we've got him here with the documentary Crude. Amazing film. We're going to be playing some clips, though there is some profanity in it because it's a documentary. So most of it will just be video in the background while Joe uh, is talking. We'll play the trailer, too, coming up here on the radio slash TV show. People tune in all the time, and I get emails. Why are you talking about video? I'm listening to you on this radio station. This is the 21st century. So it's not just a document cam or a, or a video cam like Limbaugh has. We got cameras all over the studio it's a tv studio now you got document cam video clips full production crew it's great you can watch it live if you're a prison planet dot tv member so joe it is great to have you on with us my friend pleasure it is a pleasure i missed uh, i missed you since we hung out a few years ago yeah for people that don't know about that and i guess it's probably the first time that, that, that you've talked about it or at least publicly uh, that i know of Three point plus million dollar budget, biggest for Discovery Channel ever. You're an award winning top tier documentary maker with your partner. You come out, interview me for several of the episodes, and tell folks what happened with that. Well, we we had the, uh, a series for Discovery uh, called uh, what was our? I don't even remember what our. Oh, Tribes of America was the name of the series, and, and a woman named Jane Root, who used to run the Discovery Network, loved our work and hired us to do this series about different kind of subcultures in America. And one of the subcultures we wanted to explore was the world of uh, you and, you know, the clear-eyed kind of news you like to deliver, and we thought that would be an interesting show. You know, the so-called conspiracy theorists, uh, and obviously, you know, what you guys think of yourselves. I should I should include myself amongst them, <laughs> and huh. and uh, you know uh, we did a great episode with you and a couple other people in your in your in your community. Uh, you were of course the star of the show. We did a number of other episodes on different you know different kinds of communities. Uh, and at the twelfth hour, after three million dollars had been spent on this television series, the woman who hired us, who was actually the head of the network. Uh, ended up getting fired, replaced by another guy named John Ford. And, of course, as is typical in corporate America at these um, television places, and I guess I'm biting the hand that feeds me, but, uh, you know, uh, all, the, all the projects that this woman had greenlit were thrown out the door and a whole new set of programming was brought in. But your project was shot very close to being done. Exactly. They... That's, that's what, you know, we did an episode on... The, on evangelical street preachers, we did an episode on the New York Diamond community. We did a uh, uh, episode. Actually, uh, the episode your episode was was called Alternative Radio, um, and then one on robotics. One on robotics. One on this community in uh, the desert. Um, uh, you know, it was so. It was two years ago, so my, I've been so involved in the Amazon. And it was Car it was Carnies. You were oh, doing yeah, one on we, yeah, we did one on Carnies, and then we did one on this desert in this these bunker people people living in bunkers in the desert. Um, and it was a great series, and it was ninety nine percent shot. The money had been spent. We were in the final phases of post production. Your show in particular was fantastic. Um, you know, we spent some time together following you both uh, down in Austin, and then, you know, we went to your, the premiere of, of, of your work in progress of your last movie, and then for 9-11 activities, we followed you around in New York. It was really a great episode. Yeah, you were there when I got arrested, and they, they yeah. shoved Etienne with his $100,000 camera down for, for no reason. I mean, this was intense. Yeah, it's, it, yeah and it was a great episode. You know, it's the, you know, the whole series was this kind of cinema verite exploration of these different groups of people who aren't your traditional kind of citizen. Um, and, uh, you know, at the 12th hour, 
the show was canceled and the stuff, you know, wasn't even aired. And, you know, it was, it, I'd be the first one to say if the show stunk, you know, I understand why they didn't air them. But these were high-quality documentaries made by, you know, <laughs> very good documentary makers. And it, they just fell victim to the usual thing, you know, like they'd rather waste $3 million worth of production than the new guy airing this stuff um, and, you know, realizing they made a mistake in firing this person because the shows do well. So uh, we had that, and we had another TV series that they just buried uh, called San Quentin Film School. So these two projects that had originated with um, with this woman uh, who since moved on and was fired, uh, the new regime just kind of just, you know, jettisoned uh, all of this great Yeah, back work. to Pentagon programming, but also behind the scenes we were talking I mean, because you really were doing a fair piece. It didn't make us look like angels. It was what really happened. Yeah. They came to you, you said, and said that they were trying to put, you know, would I debate a neocon? Would I? And then even though you were talking with me about, my God, they really are trying to manipulate this, then that wasn't even enough for them. They just threw the whole thing in the fire. Yeah, after, you know, and it's one thing to cancel a show or cancel a series you know, at the development stage or at the early stage where a show is not yet shot, but here you have literally $3 million worth of production. You'd think they'd at least air it at some odd hour just to at least get some economic value out of it. This is like aborting a 17-year-old. <laughs> exactly. Right when you're about to get him out of the house. Exactly, exactly. So it was very heartbreaking, and I was particularly disappointed uh, with with. With, with your episode being canceled, because I thought that was a lot of fun. It was very interesting. Uh, you know, I forget, who is the guy? It, it Rance? Jeff Rance? Is that his Yeah, name? yeah, Rance. Rance yeah, he was, he was profiled, and another guy was profiled, but you were kind of the star of the, of the episode, and the stuff we'd shot of you in New York getting arrested was, was priceless. Yeah, it, it was. Well, I know you're here to talk about Crude. Yeah. Tell us first, uh, it's opening now. Where people can see it, in what cities, amazing uh, cinematography, yeah. uh, r really serious stuff. Yeah, no, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a film that kind of changed my life and really opened my eyes up to, to some fundamental truths. Um, uh, shot over a three-year period in the uh, rainforest of Ecuador. Uh, it, you know, if you go to our website, www.crudethemovie.com, you'll see all the places it's playing. You know, it's a small... It's, you know, platform release, so we're rolling out city by city. It opens uh, this week in, well, sorry, next week, September 9th in New York City at the new, uh, not the newer, that's L.A. <laughs> it opens at the IFC Center in New York uh, on September 9th. It opens at the New Art in Los Angeles September 18th, the Lumiere in San Francisco on September 25th, and then we start adding cities like crazy, uh, and I know you're based in Austin, so it's coming to the Dolby, uh, you know, the landmark Dolby Theater, uh, October 9th. And hopefully I'm going to come down, so maybe you can come uh, come help me do a Q&A or something. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be done with my film, Fall of the Republic, by then, and it'll be getting uh, printed up on DVD, so I'll kind of be over the hump. And I would love, uh, Joe, to uh, come see you again. And uh, I'm just watching clips of the film, reminding me how well this film is done. I mean, this this looks like film. Yeah. But it was shot, I guess, in HD? Yeah, we, we use these little HD cameras, uh, and, you know, the technology is so good, you get a really nice look. And, and actually, for the theatrical release, we ended up transferring it uh, to 35 millimeter, you know, for theaters. And I'm surprised at how great it looked. It really held up nicely. Um, you know, there's beautiful light down there that, that of course, uh, helped. And that beautiful light kind of, you know, put a spotlight on the disgusting and horrible pollution that the that is the subject of the film. And Canada had roughly 15% higher wages than us, so most of their industry came down here in the 70s and 80s. NAFTA and GATT uh, lowered the Mexican standard and the United States standard. That's clear now. Mm. I mean, most of Michigan lo looks like a third world war zone. Mm. Uh, and now, as they continue the free, quote, fair trade, the race to the bottom... Uh, we need to look at what's going on in Ecuador and Mexico because that's how we're going to be living now or, or, or something closer to it. And your film investigates that. And you had to worry about kidnappings. You had to have armed guards. I mean, this was a journey into hearts of darkness, uh, Joe. So when we...
come back. Let's get into it. But but let I mean, let's start with the film and and some of the adventures and then some of the backstory, some of the things we won't see in the film. Okay, sounds good. Uh, start, uh, go ahead and start telling us about it. Oh, I thought you were queuing up for a commercial break. No, well, I'm saying we are coming. We got a few minutes. Go ahead. Uh, okay. Well, you know, I mean, basically, uh, you know, I went. I'll just talk about how I got started, you know, I, I, I kind of got dragged into this film kicking and screaming, you know, the lawyer uh, on behalf of these 30,000 plaintiffs, uh, which are rainforest dwellers, uh, indigenous people, um, came to me and, and told me about this pollution and said, you got to make a film about it. It, 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 sounded, it. it sounded preposterous. I couldn't believe that what he was telling me was true, but I went down and looked at it for myself, and there I saw an area the size of Rhode Island, a 1,700 square mile swath of the Amazon rainforest completely despoiled through oil production. Um, you know, for 30 years, Texaco drilled oil, and when you, when you drill for oil and the oil comes up out of the ground, you have to separate what's called formation water, 